fly into this, you know, certain kind of rage for a few seconds, catches himself, particularly because he's not even sure if he's awake. He praises Colorado's courage and he allows him to go to the king. Whether he's awake or not, says Igmundo says, it really doesn't matter. All that matters is to act well, to do good deeds. Act 3, C2. There is a fight. People are battling, some supporting Sesigmundo, some supporting Astolfo. Basilio himself will go into the battle, right into the battle, to defend his crown against Sesigmundo. And so obviously we have as well the King Arthur motif going on here, right? Arthur uh, versus Mordred, his, his uh, bastard son. We also have Rosura, who's going to complain to Colado that although Astolfo has seen her, he still woos and goes after Estrella. She wants Colado to kill Astolfo. So you have, again, divided loyalties happening, right, for poor Colado. Colado will explain, I can't, because Astolfo saved my life, he says, when Sesigmundo tried to kill me. He's obviously in Astolfo's debt. To kill him would show an unbecoming lack of gratitude, a lack of honor. He says that instead, he will give Rosero his fortune, but that she must enter a convent. Rosero, however, refuses and declares she will kill Astolfo herself and revenge her honor. And at that point, Colado says, fine, 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 I'll help you. Act 3, scene 3, we've got Sesigmono leading troops. He declares that the less he cares for victory, the less it will grieve him when he wakes to find his triumph has only been a dream. Rosero implores, she's armed, implores the assistance in her cause from Sesigmundo, right, against Astolfo. She tells the story of her mother's seduction, betrayal by a man whose identity she doesn't know, but whom the audience knows is Colado, and of her own similar seduction and betrayal, obviously, by Astolfo. She speaks of the other times that she and Sesigmundo have seen each other and been together in the tower when he was imprisoned at court, where he had princely power, and that she has known him in both these states adds to his confusion about which was a dream, which was a waking state, are both the same, are both different. Whether waking or dreaming, however, says Igmundo understands that Rosura is in his power and that he may satisfy his sexual lust. Right? There's this momentary urge to overcome, right, that that idea that he is in fact dreaming, abandoning the way of goodness, and gain a little bit of sexual pleasure. However, he thinks if he's not dreaming and really awake, the case is similar. For life is like a dream, he says, from which one wakes in death, and there's little satisfaction gained from an evil action, which is as short-lived as an action in a dream and will have eternal consequences. So, he stops himself. He says, even though I want Rasura, I'm lustful for Rasura, I'm going to show restraint. And again, we're thinking, obviously, about Plato and his four cardinal virtues from Republic of Wisdom, Courage, of course, that notion of discipline, right, or temperance, and then, and, and, and then finally, the idea of justice itself. All of these are going to play powerfully in the end of our play here, right? Clarion then, um, the um, sidekick of Rosera, who was always talking, he's hiding, and in the confusion of the battle, uh, he ends up killed in the crossfire. Says Igmundo's forces win, Basilio will flee, um, will be told by Astolfo and Colado to flee. However, he doesn't. He's resigned now. He's, he's like, I know my son's going to kill me now that he's taken over the kingdom. However, says Igmundo, won't kill his father. Instead, he allows his father to live. He will, even though he wants to be with Rosura, he will renounce his passion. He gives her to Astolfo to marry, obviously restoring the honor. And he takes Estrella as his wife. He becomes the king virtuous, merciful, peaceful. He's aware that life is a dream, he says, and dreams are illusions that end. The, the speech at the end is a compelling, compelling speech. That's how the play ends. Now let's ask about our big five. Epistemologically, what does this text say? Well, the first thing that it says in terms about what we can know is that you got to be very careful with an absolutist position. I am absolutely right, you are absolutely wrong in terms of the things that we know. Because life is, is, it can be like a dream. To that degree, the fallibilist position is what is being suggested here. I think I'm right, but I could be wrong. It's that I could be wrong that's so vital to understanding and appreciating the play. Ontologically, what does this text say? Well, we've said it often. We are the stories that we tell, the stories we retell, but we're also the stories we accept or reject. And Sisig Mundo has to decide which stories will define him 
as ontologically who he is. Psychologically, what does this text say? Well, the power of fear, no question. The power of aggressive tendencies, no question. They have to be somehow controlled. Sociologically, what's this text say? Well, obviously, the young do overthrow the old, no question. But the need for us to live in peace with each other, even though we can live and even get away with sometimes it otherwise. Finally, theod uh, theodicy question, why why is there so much pain and suffering? And I think that what Calderon is trying to argue is what we have often said is the probably best answer to the theodicy question. When bad things happen, don't ask why did this happen to me. Learn to ask why it happened for me. Sesigundo has to learn that, how to ask that question, and that is significant. Let's finish with our three levels. At level 2A, what's one of the major messages here? Well, life is really whether it's a dream or not. Life is really about understanding and coming to terms with what matters, right? At 2B, notice the symbolism. Basilio, of course, is the father, represents power, represents the old, and then, of course, says Mundo is the son. He represents the seeker. He represents the one that must, in the end, overcome the old. At 3A, well, we've mentioned already Plato's Republic. Shakespeare's Hamlet comes to mind. Sophocles' Oedipus Rex comes to mind, as well as Shakespeare's Tempest. There's so many texts that come to mind here. I'm, I'm interested in the way that you guys will kind of think through that one. Finally, at 3B, how can we relate this to ourselves personally? How about this one? What was a time in your life when you weren't treated well by somebody who should have treated you well? And then you had to come to terms with that, and ultimately you had to forgive them. Says so Igundo at the end of the play, he has the ability to put, for example, Basilio in the very tower prison where he has spent his youth. His days of youth, he says, have been ill spent, you know, locked up in it. And he, had to, he has to forgive, and that's exactly what he does. What was a time in your life when that happened for you, and you had to do that? And then finally, how do you know that what you're experiencing right now is, in fact, not an amazing dream? In fact, it is true. How do, you, how do you parse that out? And to what degree do you recognize in your life that you need to do well with the things that you have in your life to do at all? Do them well. What motivates you to do that? Well, I hope that you will find this play one that you will enjoy studying, reading, and, of course, ultimately watching. Thank you.